Hello and welcome to this IFAF flag football officiating training tape. I'm Jeb Brooks Lewis and today we're going to be looking at the mechanics of working the down judge, formerly known as linesman position. This tape will cover four main facets of working the down judge position. The first is movement, the second is focus, the third is line to game mechanics and the fourth is communication. Within this tape we're going to see some examples of really really good mechanics and some examples of where the mechanics could be improved. The key thing to remember here is that we're not looking just to highlight mistakes made by officials, but more to take on board learnings and understand how we can all work games better in the future. So without further ado, let's move on to the videos. This is a really good example of down judge mechanics when it comes to movement downfield on a pass. As you can see, I've highlighted the down judge here, and if we then roll the clip onwards, we see that. As the ball is snapped, the down judge holds the line of scrimmage until the pass is thrown, completed past the line, and then they move quickly downfield to the dead ball spot. It's really important for the down judge to hold the line of scrimmage as you are responsible for knowing when players in the ball cross it, and this is especially important when it comes to a scrambling quarterback who could potentially step across the line before then throwing a pass. This down judge does that perfectly and also shows some really good hustle to get to the dead ball spot as the tackle is made. This next clip shows an example of where a down judge preempts the pass and starts moving downfield early. As you can see, they're highlighted here. And if we then roll the clip onwards, you see once the ball snapped, they immediately start moving downfield. In reality, this down judge should be remaining at the line of scrimmage for the reasons that we discussed on the previous play. If we then roll the clip again, you see that the pass actually goes deep, so in the end, it doesn't actually matter. However, if this quarterback had started scrambling around, we could be in a situation where there is no official covering the line of scrimmage and being able to make a call on whether the quarterback has crossed the line or not. What we should look to do is hold the line of scrimmage until that pass is thrown. This next series of plays look at where the down judge should be focusing their attention during a down. As per the mechanics manual, the down judge should be looking at a strip from the line of scrimmage to approximately 5 yards deep in the defensive backfield. This is where the majority of interactions between receivers and defenders will take place and fouls are likely to occur. If we roll this tape onwards, we see that the ball is snapped and immediately the down judge shifts their focus into the defensive backfield. This means that they will be able to pick up any of those fouls and any contact between defenders and receivers. As discussed on previous plays, this down judge also does a really good job of holding the line of scrimmage until the pass is thrown. This next play shows an example of where a down judge has their focus in the offensive backfield instead of on the five yard strip we discussed on the previous play. If we roll it onwards now, we can see that as the ball is snapped, the down judge continues to look at the quarterback instead of at that five yard strip. In this case, it would be especially important to be focused there because as you can see, there are players interacting with each other and the potential for a foul to take place. The down judge does shift their focus as the ball is thrown. However, this could be a little bit too late if something had happened prior to the pass being thrown. On this next play, we see that even if something a little bit weird happens, it's still important for the down judge to keep their focus in the correct area of the field. If we roll it on, we see that as the ball snapped, the down judge does start moving downfield, and then we see a, f a pass thrown in the backfield. The, the down judge comes back to the line of scrimmage and then punches into the backfield when a backwards pass is made. This is a clear indicator that they're not looking downfield, but are actually looking into the backfield as well. We could be in a situation where something is happening downfield and it would be important for the down judge to be looking there instead of being focused in the offensive backfield. When a situation like this occurs, the referee has primary responsibility on any backwards passes that are thrown, while the down judge should retain focus on the five yard strip that has been previously mentioned. This is the last play where we'll talk about where a down judge's focus should be on a down and as with many aspects of football officiating there are exceptions to the philosophies that we normally have in place. 
The snap goes off and immediately the widest receivers on the left and right of the formation drop back into position where they may receive a backwards pass and subsequently throw a forwards pass. In a normal case where there were only two players doing this, it would just be the referee's responsibility to cover these players. However, in this play, as there are three of them, the down judge should also shift their focus into the offensive backfield. The down judge should look at the closest player to them, while the referee should look to move to the sideline opposite the down judge and focus on the player closest to them. The reason we do this on a play with three potential forward passes is that there are only two players downfield so therefore we have the field judge and side judge in a position to cover both of them without the down judge's assistance. As you can see on this play the down judge is looking into the backfield and watches the player closest to them as the ball is passed between the three potential forward passes. As it rolls on you can see he continues to watch as the player scrambles around we have another backwards pass before the ball is eventually thrown downfield with the down judge shifting their focus as the pass is thrown. Obviously this type of situation is quite unusual so it's important to be switched on so that when it does happen we're looking in the right area and are ready to pick up any potential fouls. The next two plays look at how the down judge should be involved in coverage of the line to gain. Second to the goal lines, the line to gain is the most important line on the field, so it's vital that an official is in position to rule on forward progress around it and whether the ball is short to the line to gain or past it for a first down. When the ball is located within two yards of the line to gain, it is the down judge's responsibility to cover it and at the snap, the down judge should move immediately to the line to gain and officiate from there. We'll sacrifice some visibility on the line to scrimmage, but the advantage we have of this is that the down judge is in the best position to make any calls that are close on a completion around the line to gain. If the ball is located any further than two yards from the line to gain, then the field judge should look to move back and cover it instead of the down judge. As you can see, as the snap goes off here and the down judge immediately moves to the line to gain and officiates from there and once the pass is complete they move further downfield eventually taking the spot of progress at the tackle. This is exactly the mechanics that we want to see on a play like this and ensures that we have best visibility on any close plays around the line to gain. This play is an example of where we leave the line to gain uncovered. As you can see the ball is in a very similar position to as it was in the previous play. However, at the snap, the down judge does not step up to cover the line and neither does the field judge come back to cover it. We get lucky as the pass is approximately five yards further than the line to gain. However, if it had been short, we would not have had an official in place to make a call here. The final two plays we are going to look at concern communication. The down judge is in a fortunate position in having the side judge on their sideline as well, meaning that there are two sets of eyes on any close catches involving the sideline. In this play, we see a close catch and we also see the down judge very visibly communicate with the side judge before giving a signal. This is exactly what we want to see in these sort of situations, with the officials working together to ensure they get the call right and there are no conflicting signals. This next play shows an example of where a little bit more communication between the down judge and side judge would be beneficial. The pass is thrown and is completed close to the sideline for a touchdown. However, both the down judge and the side judge immediately come up with touchdown signals. It would be useful in this situation for the down judge and side judge to share a look between them before then coming up with the signals to ensure that they have the same decision as was the case in the previous play. There's no rush to give a signal on this play, so it's better to take your time and ensure that we get the decision correct instead of rushing it and potentially having those aforementioned conflicting signals. 
This brings us to the end of the Down Judge training tape. Hopefully it's provided you with some useful insights and something that you can take into the next game that you work. So thank you very much for watching.